Hi, this is Maury Moreland Morrison here to tell you Geico has more than just great savings, much more. Yes, while Geico could help you rack up more moolah faster than you can say metamorphosis, they've also been the fastest growing auto insurer for more than 10 years. That's more like it. Furthermore, Geico has fast and friendly claim service. That might seem like an oxymoron, but it's not. All the more reason to say no other auto insurer has more more than Geico. Geico, expect great savings and a whole lot more. Blog Talk Radio. Monster Man It was a graveyard smash He did the match It caught on in a flash He did the match He did the Monster Man From my laboratory in the castle east To the master bedroom where the vampires peace The ghouls all came from their humble abode To get a jolt from my electrode They did the match They did the Monster Man it was a graveyard smash. They did the man. It caught on in a flash. They did the man. They did the monster man. The zombies were having fun. The party had just begun. The guests included Wolfman, Dracula, and his son. The scene was rocking, all were digging the sounds. Igor on chains, backed by his baying hounds. The coffin bangers were about to arrive with their vocal group, the Crypt Kicker Five. They played the match. They played the monster match. The monster match. It was a graveyard smash. They played the match. It got on in a flash. They played the match. They played the monster match. Out from his coffin, Rack's voice did ring. Seemed he was troubled by just one thing. Opened the lid and shook his fist and said, Whatever happened to my Transylvania twist? It's now the match. It's now the monster match. The monster match. And it's a graveyard smash. It's now the match. It's caught on in a flash. It's now the match. It's now the Monster Mash. Now everything's cool, Drax's a part of the band. And my Monster Mash is the hit of the land. For you, the living, this mash was meant to. When you get to my door, tell them what it said. Then you can mash. Then you can Monster Mash. The Monster Mash. And you, my graveyard smash. Then you can mash. You'll get on in a flash. Then you can mash. Then you can Monster Mash. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is Saturday night, October the 28th, just a few more days before the witching hour. This is Off the Chain. I am your host, Yvonne Mason, and I think I have some timer's disease because I told my co-host I was playing Ghostbusters, but in, in essence, I guess I did put up Monster Mash. So we will start the show <laughs> off with my <laughs> some timer's disease. Oh, this week, this month has just been insane. I, I, I think I've been possessed by demons or something. I don't know. It's been that kind of week, that kind of month. But this morning when I did my um, my numbers, ladies and gentlemen, we have reached 65,000 plus listeners just on this show. That is awesome. Now, oh, and that's my co-host, Garrett Pinch. Pinchster, by the way, who I have not introduced yet. But 65,000 listeners just on the show, ladies and gentlemen, that's enough to make anybody crazy. When you add all of the podcasts this thing goes up on, iTunes, YouTube, FM.com, TuneIn Radio, SoundCloud, MixCloud, Spreaker, Podcast, Podcast.com, and some I don't even know about, 
We are at 83,000 listeners in over 70 countries. Yeah, take that one in for a minute. Thanks, guys. (laughs) It's, It's almost overwhelming. And it's because of my guests and my listeners that that your show is just, I I can't even put it into words, and I'm a wordsmith, because y'all keep coming back to listen. My guests, like my guest tonight, Robert Luthard Hold, can't talk either, keep coming back. My co-host, Garrett Pinchner, with with Webb keeps coming back. He's coming back in November as a guest. Things like this keep the show over the top and off the chain, and I am so, so appreciative. So with that being said, let me introduce my co-host, Garrett Pinster with Hanging with the Webb, and the two girls, Deanna and Sage La. They are, they are in the background. They were the ones clapping. My guest tonight has been on the show before. His name is Robert Luthold. He is an absolutely amazing young man. He was born November the 3rd, 1977. And from what he tells me, he's been a hellraiser since. Sands the chains and leather. Well, at least for now. Ever since, after being dragged into the writing thing by our dear friend Hydra, and he was kicking and screaming, he became a regular contributor to Infernal Ink Magazine, which is Hydra's magazine, with sporadic appearances elsewhere. He currently resides in Thibodeau, Louisiana. I love that word. I love that the name of that city. Thibodeau, Louisiana, it just rolls off the tongue. And he also can be found on Facebook. When he's not writing or planning world domination, he holds a Metal Invaders on Radio Free Satan, which is really a showcase his passion for metal music. He is also a Church of Satan member. Robert, thank you, my dear, for for coming back on the show tonight. Oh, and ladies and gentlemen, I have to tell you this real quick. Of all the shows that I have done, Robert's first show with me when he was sick back in May, and and he was not feeling good, but he, he did me the honor of spending an hour with me and read a poem that he had written, which was very difficult, but it was a beautiful, beautiful poem. His podcast is one of my highest rated podcasts. So, Robert, thank you, thank you, thank you for coming back on the show. Well, thank you, Yvonne. I'm honored. I... I'm honored to hear that my first appearance was uh, that highly rated and that I didn't ruin the show. Oh, honey, no. Absolutely not. That's when we call it off the chain, <laughs> right, Garrett? Absolutely. If we're not having if we're not having fun, we're doing something wrong, right? Uh, yep, I agree. I agree. So, Garrett, oh, I definitely agree as well. Now, to Garrett, start this evening off right, good evening to the listeners out there listening to off the chain. I am Count Gimpula. Robert's alter ego. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. Yeah. See, I'm not act- you see, I'm not actually a vampire. I'm just a pain in the, in the neck. <laughs> <laughs> and and t- Robert, you want to tell people why your alter ego is Count Gimpula? Well, I. You know, it goes back to my sense of humor, which is uh, as twisted as my spine is. I'm taking GIMP back. I don't see GIMP as a slur for being disabled. I'm reclaiming that term. Uh, I kind of have this bad habit of offending people by using words they're not comfortable with. <sighs> but that's what happens these days. They're well, only you, words, and they only hurt right. you if, they, if you give them the power to hurt you. Amen. Garrett, do you, don't you agree R- with that? I, I, I'll tell you, as soon as he said that, uh, the very first thing that went through my mind is that 
one of the uh, great things about being a writer and a creative mind is that working with language, you learn the distinctions between connotation and definition. And words do have power. Words do matter. And where they have the greatest power is when, uh, as in Robert's case, you can seize a word and own it. And, and it doesn't have to have a connotation that it has right now. You can change the connotation. You can change the way people perceive it. Um, and, and, it, and instead of seeing it as a slur, uh, you can help them to see it as merely another word, another descriptive term and one that does not offend, and one that, you know, Robert has, has owned it. Uh, I, I love the idea. He says, uh, my, my sense of humor is as twisted as my spine. Um, I guess. For anyone else, anyone else would be uncomfortable saying that. And, he, and, and Robert's not. Robert will just come right out and say, hey, this is the way it is. And guess what, guys? I own it. I own my life. And I think that's fantastic. Robert, you know, a, a big hand for that alone. That is one of the things that is, it makes the soul of a poet. The ability to own the way people see you and the way people see the world. Well, through your um, words. I disagree. I disagree with the fact that I have a soul. It's been <laughs> auctioned off to Microsoft and uh, the Folgers Coffee Company. <laughs> yeah, they'll they'll be. Uh, is there anything like? Is there anything like the Starbucks people with mine? They'll be coming to collect soon enough. <laughs> Well, let's see. With the amount of coffee I've had over the four, almost 40 years of my life, wow, that's still kind of shocking. I'll be 40 next week. Uh, I never really, I never really thought that far ahead. <laughs> it's like, it's like I blinked and I was 30, and now I'm gonna be 40 next week. But hey, I still look good. The coffee <laughs> keeps me young and preserves my vital organs. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Robert, I want to know something. When when you meet your demise and and you transition, are you going to have them bury you or cremate you with a coffee pot in one hand and your coffee cup in the other hand? Well, uh, assuming my sarcasm doesn't get me killed. <laughs> um, I will probably be cremated or pressed into a everlasting coffee cup. That's my goal. Science needs to create that shit. <laughs> I like that. For we we can put a man on the moon. There needs to be an everlasting coffee cup. <laughs> oh, that is too funny. That is way too funny. Garrett, I, I can't top that. I, you know what? It is. It, it's hard to top. Uh, I can't <laughs> think of a better way to go myself. Uh, and I, I mean, I'm pretty main, sure they're going to have me. They're going to have me stuffed around here. I'm pretty sure. So, mainlining the coffee would kill us all because our bodies cannot take caffeine directly. Damn it. Uh, <laughs> Oh, my goodness. You know, I, I agree, Robert. There's someone and I just stick my arm out and say, please, just intravenously feed me coffee. Exactly. I, I, you know, I don't trust people that when I tell them I drink coffee, they're like, ew, no. Why would you drink that awful stuff? And I just say to myself, come Why closer wasn't? when I've only had one cup. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I... I I I gotta tell you, folks. We li- we live in America. Anyone in the morning who is chipper, who is not on something, can't be trusted. Exactly. Uh, we have many ways to get our caffeine and our fix in this country. So if you're not on anything and you're that cheery, oh, you can't be trusted at all. <clears throat> I'm running the other way. Mm-hmm. So 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 Robert. Let let if you if you feel like it because I I am so proud of of where you are now if you feel like it talk a little bit about what's happened since May to you. Sure, we can uh, put the sit down county routine on the shelf for right now, and I can be <laughs> serious for about five minutes if you like. Okay, five minutes. Uh, what it was. 
what it was was after my first appearance on the show, shortly afterward, as I kind of mentioned, I'd been having a lot of leg pain and a lot of hip pain, and it turns out that um, I got hip dysplasia, which is something a lot of people with CP get, which which th- what that is is uh, my hip became dislocated, my right hip, and the joint became warped and deformed, and the cartilage rubbed away to where it was basically bone grinding on bone. And uh, I ended up having to have what's called a hip resectioning, which is where they took the joint away and the top part of the hip and pulled the tendons and muscles away and wrapped that around the top of the leg. Basically, what happened is life proved to me that it did indeed have a bone to pick with me. It just happened to be my right hip. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Robert. So this is just one of the many reasons I love you, my friend, because you you and I have talked before. Life is neither good nor bad. Life is just life. And and Garrett and I were talking about this before you called in. It's, It's our perception of our journey that makes our life good or bad. And and you have chosen to, as you say, own not only the words, but you own your uniqueness. And I'm not going to say it's a disability because there's hardly anything disabled about you other than you just can't walk like the rest of us, but there's some days I can't walk. So you owned it. And you, when you own it, then it becomes something special. It gives not only you power, but it gives the people that are in your life power. And I want to thank you for that. You're welcome. Absolutely. The, the, the way I figure it, you have two choices. You can take your situation in life and say, oh, poor me, this sucks, and be an absolutely miserable person, or you can, you know, just say, okay, this is life. What can I do with it? And, by the way, I'd like to give a shout-out to my friend Jeff, who is listening. He says he brought the WD-40, and that's an in-joke between us because we <laughs> want a podcast together, and one of our friends had a dog, and they were squeaking the toy whenever I would talk, so we blamed it on my wheelchair. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So- and also, uh, my friends Nikki and Christopher are listening before they go out for Halloween festivities. Hey, guys. And and see that's that's another thing about you, ladies and gentlemen. I have followed Robert for a long, long time, even before I asked him to be on the show. I've, I've met him through Hydra, and he, unlike some of us, when we get things wrong with us, Robert has stayed loyal to himself and to his friends throughout. And this has not been an easy journey because there were days when when he would say, I'm in so much pain, and he would struggle to transfer from the bed to the chair, from the chair to the shower. But yet he maintained his twisted, twisted, twisted sense of humor, and he inspired me to be a better person. And I, I can't thank you enough, my friend. Well, you're welcome. I will admit, you know, I have had bad days. I have had dark periods. And no, it's not because I didn't pay my light bill. My light bill was fine. Uh, but, you know, it's part of being human. But yes. you deal with the negative times. You get over it. And you... Uh, you look to your support system if you can't handle it yourself. And thank God for a support system, right, Garrett? Amen. I'll tell you. Uh, I think no matter who you are and, and, and what you're going through, the people around you can are really the true 
enablers or or the true disability, uh, how yeah. people around you perceive you and how people around you treat you uh, will either help you or hinder you. And Robert, it sounds like you've got some fantastic people around you that have helped you to turn this journey into a really positive experience. And, and I'm glad when they, when they fixed your hip, I'm glad they didn't remove your humorous. <laughs> oh yeah, that would suck. Oh, that, that hurt. That would suck that, because you know, wow, that, that, that pun hurt everybody in this room. Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. My humor is as lame as my legs sometimes. So we'll let that one go. <laughs> Uh, I told you, ladies and gentlemen, this is off the chain. I'm laughing so hard, I've got tears running down my face. Now that's 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 pretty bad. Uh, oh Lord, have mercy. <laughs> okay, Garrett, now well, you get to ask some questions because I I, I got to get the tears out of my face. Let, <laughs> let me just reiterate before we go any further. Whatever it is, I didn't do it. Nobody saw me do it. You can't prove it. But I will accept the bribe. Wow. Well, I'll tell you what. I was uh, I, I was told um, that you you started writing uh, submitting articles for uh, for uh, Hydra's magazine. And uh, what what did you start out writing about when you were writing? What was your um, most of the time? It's erotic horror. Sometimes it's horror and sometimes I look back on what I've written and I think to myself where the fuck did that come from <laughs> so it's like most of my high school poems uh, you know no I, I uh, <laughs> and half of my novels for that matter um, it, it, well, back I don't know about well. that I, I don't know about that I haven't written anything about like Zits or uh, awkward boners <laughs> or wet dreams. But... That's half. That's half of literature today. Um, so... Not Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> Not Fifty Shades of Grey. That's right. Uh, you know what? I, I have this. I have this note here that I made earlier, and I'm kind of curious. Uh, I am told, sir, that your nickname is Randian Objectivist Dude Bro. Okay, there's a story behind. I gotta know where. I gotta know there's, where the there's hell There's a story behind that, that. and generally, when I come on shows like this, I don't, you know, outright discuss Satanism or talk shop, as I like to call it. But you know, the Church of Satan has been around for 50 years, and I'm sure both of you have seen news articles about this new uh, social justice group. They're calling themselves the Satanic Temple, which, you know, to to um, give them as little attention as possible, they're like a Taiwanese knockoff Gucci bag version of Satanism. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do know, I do know a little bit of, about the subject in that, in that uh, I, I always get a kick out of, of seeing people's faces when uh, in fact, we were discussing it before the show. Uh, when somebody hears you uh, are a member of the Church of Satan, because that doesn't mean what most people think it means, does it, Robert? Can you can you elaborate just a little bit uh, on on the belief system so that people can understand this? Sure, it's sure. a great well, way to because it doesn't really mean what it says it means. It's mm-hmm. very very different. Before I go into it, I do want to make clear that I am I am a member of the Church of Satan. I am not a representative of the Church of Satan. I can articulate Satanism very well, though. But Satanism is a very brutal, a very frank religion and philosophy. It's based in atheism. Uh, We are a very live and let live type of people. We don't go out of our way to harm people. We view animals and children as sacred, and we believe in following whatever um, enhances our happiness so long as it's legal and doesn't harm anyone else. That's probably one of the most concise ways uh, that you could articulate uh, your belief system. Um, 
uh, years ago, uh, I had the opportunity to study uh, a little bit, uh, and, and it's for, for those of you out there listening right now, uh, it's it's a great way to get attention to a uh, to a religion to attach um, what people see as a, a demonic reference to it. But as Robert said, uh, the the church itself is actually one of brutal honesty with yourself and knowing that what you want and what you do to make yourself happy is truly at the center of most people's lives anyway. Robert, and in his faith, has actually uh, made an admission of this rather than uh, disguised it behind altruistic intentions. So, again, owning words is an important thing that we all do. And, Robert, once again, you've done that. And thank you for articulating that for the listeners. Now, um, tell us a little now this now this nickname – Tell us a little bit about this, where this nickname comes from now. Okay, that was actually hurled at me as an insult because uh, some guy who I will not mention wrote what he called the New Satanic Bible. And I just left a one-star review explaining that, that what he was talking about was not Satanism at all and that the Satanic Bible uh, had originally been published in 1969. And the guy went on a tirade publicly on his MySpace, I mean his uh, Facebook profile for like a week and used Randy (laughs) and Objectivist Dude Bro as an insult. And my friends and I reclaimed it. (laughs) And we're just like... Wow. Hey, th- this is the way I look at it. If people want to take that much time obsessing over me, hey, I'm in their mouth anyway. They better be ready to swallow. <laughs> <laughs> Outstanding. I love it. Okay. Now, I understand also in addition to being very articulate and well, uh, and and a poet by nature, you also DJ on Radio Free Satan as DJ Hell on Wheels, uh, where you are are an avid uh, metal fan. And um, so, talk a little bit about that and what draws you. Sure. Uh, yeah. What what, sure. what draws uh, you to the, the first, music? The first time I was on the show, I was hosting. Uh, Metal Invaders. Um, I'm working on getting back to podcasting, but I will be hosting the Metal Grotto, which is also on Radio Free Satan. Uh, my show, basically, um, I I do a lot of different genres, but it's primarily black metal and death metal. And uh, I've I've also kind of fallen in love with what's known as the um, occult rock revival, which encompasses bands like Ghost and uh, the now defunct band Person and the Devil's Blood, you know they all have like that Sabbathy type sound, you know uh-huh. the doom uh-huh. metal, the sludgy riffs and things like that. So awesome, awesome, and, and um, I, I take it that you are an avid fan of the of the genres. Yes, I am. Uh, for uh, example, I, I've seen. For example, I've seen the black metal band Mayhem five times. Uh, <laughs> I've I've actually become uh, close friends with members of the band, and uh, you know I've hung out with them after gigs, and all of these guys are just great people. Um, they don't well, not actually too... spew blood or anything like that, <laughs> you know. It's well, like... not to put too fine a point on it. Once again, I, I love that that uh, you're an avid fan of the music and 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 these fantastic creators in and of themselves. But for those people out there uh, in radio land and in podcast land um, <clears throat> who may have uh, a different perception of things. Once again, owning words and owning things. Metal rock is not probably what most people are picturing in their head. Guys, we're not talking about 80s hair metal. Um, We're talking about a a genre that's been around a a long time. Um, And so what in particular draws you to this particular metal sound, Robert? Well, for for black metal in particular, for me, it was kind of, you know, the dark vibe, 
not so much the blasphemous lyrics sometimes. To me, metal is art. Music is art in general. Whether or not you like the genre specifically, it's art. True. Absolutely. Very true. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> so, now, favorite metal band, Robert? What's your favorite metal band? Uh, do I have to pick one? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. We're going to give you two. Give us your favorite obscure metal band, something that only a true fan would know, and then give us your favorite crossover metal band, somebody that's made it into the to the real mainstream oh, eye shit. that you think brought it, did it well. <laughs> obscure. <laughs> Even <laughs> that's going to be a tough one because uh, – I, I get deep you know, here. It's like Barbara Walters, okay? We're going to get inside <laughs> your head. As, oh, that's a scary place to be. As you don't start talking like Bob Walters, too. <laughs> <laughs> I can't quite get that Long Island vibe, you know? So, uh... <laughs> okay, then what about Baba Wawa? <laughs> you know, the, all the Saturday Night Live skit? Yes, I remember that. <laughs> yes. Wow. So, um, yeah, underground, I would say Acherontas from Greece. And the more mainstream, I'd definitely say Typo Negative. Mm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Very nice. And, uh, and that those guys go out there and Google that stuff so you can hear some of the music again. As, uh, as Robert in- indicated earlier out there in, in, uh, on the web there. Uh, you, you'll find out some of the lyrics uh, you may, may seem, again, and how Robert put it, it's blasphemous. Uh, but, you know, the truth is art is art. It's supposed to make you think. It's supposed to make you consider uh, and deliberate. And sometimes art that challenges our preconceptions does just that. So check those things out, and, uh, and you'll understand a little bit about what Robert's talking about. Robert, are you ready to read your poem? So sure, let discuss. me let me get my note up again and I'll be ready to read it. And okay. I can give you some background while I'm getting the note up. Absolutely. Um, when I when I do my writing, it's always um I never know how it's going to play out. Sometimes I have an idea, sometimes it's a flash, and sometimes It's just one word, and I build around that one word. And sounds a lot like uh, my life. The well, we won't discuss my love life on the show because (laughs) at this point it's on um, somewhat of life support, and uh, I, I have a very, very strong relationship with my left hand. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Robert, hey, you're so bad. <clears throat> one one thing about situations like this is, you know, your your hand will never get jealous if you use the other one. <laughs> he is so bad. He is so bad. <laughs> And so good at it. Wow. Oh, Lord. wow. It's, one of, it's one of my many talents. That is true, Robert. That is so true. Along with having a twisted sense of humor, you were so bad and so good at it. Oh, That's yeah. why we love you. <laughs> well, I love you guys, too. But don't hold that against me. I wouldn't dare. <laughs> It'll be our secret. Oh. So... <clears throat> All right. Have you got um, b- before I actually do the reading, let me give you some background. Um, like I said, sometimes when I get a writing idea, it's built around a single word. And in this case, I hope I'm pronouncing the word right, pustules or pustules, which are basically like blisters filled with pus. You know, nice appetizing stuff in case you're sitting down to dinner right now. (laughs) (laughs) 
I'm just saying, Thanks. I don't know where this Rich, is going, but it's going to be explosive. It, it's going to be good. <laughs> it's going to be real good, Garrett. <laughs> Uh, there's there's really um, no meter for this poem, and there's really no um, rhyme scheme. Uh, but I can definitely tell you that um, the cadence of it is somewhat done in a death metal rhythm. I can't, of course, sing the lyrics because I want to have a throat left afterward. Um <laughs> So, but, so yeah, reading it, it would was, be good. Yes, reading it will be fine, and I'm not as nervous this time. Uh, it's actually a work in progress, and this is a working title. It's called Savage Undead Bloodbath. Ooh. Huh. And are you guys ready? Carry on. Wow. We are on the All edge right. of our seats. The Dead Walk. Fed and rotted, swollen skin with pulsating pustules. Onward they lurch with unquenchable bloodthirst, hungry for flesh. Swollen stomachs distend, enshrined in intestines, seeking human victims. Ravenous undead causing endless bloodshed and carnage never ending. The days of humanity are done. The once proud apex predator is now nothing more than living meat. Wow. I just had a visual. I mean, the the, the walking dead have nothing on this poem. Yeah, really. Uh, the, the images that that conjures is just, uh, it's, an, it's amazing how you've managed to uh, capture a picture uh, with your with with those words. It really is. Um, it, it's a it's a wonderful gift to be able to paint with words, and you've you've done just that. Like as Yvonne said, you really did conjure an image with that. It, not a very nice one, but definitely an image. It gave me, ch- and a, it and gave a me chill bumps. Gave me chill bumps. Absolutely. Uh, because I kept absolutely. The more he's reading, the more I'm saying, okay, tell me more. I want to know more about these undead. I want to see this picture in, in cinemagraphic color. Well, the girls are here, and they, they were listening in to that. And uh, Sage has only one thing to say. Send more cops. Send more cops. <laughs> <laughs> more cops. you've watched The Return of the Living Dead and uh, The Return absolutely. of the Living Dead Part 2. Absolutely. And actually, (laughs) I'm a huge fan of those films. I'm also a huge fan of Romero's masterworks, Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, and Day of the Dead, and Mm -hmm, also mm -hmm. Land of the Dead. Well, what you did... It was a real tragedy when he died. It was, because he was a master at what he did. Now I have a question. I know up until recently, uh, zombies uh, zombies are the are the proverbial stepchildren of monsters uh, in fiction, and uh, that uh, largely uh, in pop culture today they're a little more accepted, primarily because of something like The Walking Dead, et cetera. But pre Walking Dead, Robert, what 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 did you see in the zombie as a monster? That, that spoke to you. You you rattled off some of the great zombie films uh, that were largely considered B-movies, even though they are intensely well-made. But it's primarily because of the subject matter. And zombies, like I said, vampires have been sexy forever. Werewolves have been sexy forever. Zombies were kind of forgotten about until recently. What drew you to that? Uh, other, Obviously, Romero is a master filmmaker. So by and of itself, those films stand out. But what drew you to that particular monster? Honestly, if if you really want to see some good zombie work um, besides <laughs> Romero, look no further than than um, Italy with Lucio Fulci and Bruno Mattei because Lucio Fulci um, produced the popular zombie other. Otherwise known as Zombie 2 in Italy, 
which was meant to be a direct sequel to Dawn of the Dead. Uh, wow. It brought zombies back to the whole idea of voodoo causing them. Uh-huh. And uh, Kochi also did what he called his Gates of Hell trilogy, which is um, City of the Living Dead, The Beyond, and uh, House by the Cemetery. Uh, they aren't connected, but there are gratuitous scenes of violence. And, of course, Zombie has the uh, infamous zombie versus shark scene in it. And the uh, splinter through the eyeball scene. And I had wow. forgotten that the 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 zombie culture started... With voodoo, I had forgotten that until Robert brought it up. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah, like the yeah. old yeah, black been, uh... and white, the old black and white zombie movies pre Romero were based around voodoo, like mm-hmm. White Zombie, I Walked with a Zombie, Children Shouldn't Play with Dead Things, which is another rather obscure film that's overlooked, unfortunately. Yeah, wow. well, it, 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 as I said before, for most of the 20th century, the zombie has been sort of the forgotten monster, and he's one of and, and the zombie is one of the scariest monsters because, in the voodoo tradition, this is a monster that's created in the control of another person or in the control of animal nature. Um, mm-hmm. Without uh, there, there's no deep moral crux there. It's you're you're either a slave in the, the voodoo tradition of being a zombie, or or you're the undead, which is just a ravenous hunger. And um, so it's one of the most frightening monsters because there's there's no underlying motivation. Um, you're not you're not like vampires uh, with a conscience have been like a thing for like 50 years now. Um, uh, where we, we won't discuss don't. Twilight. <laughs> yeah, vampires Twilight. do not sparkle. <laughs> no, yes, they don't. Yes, they're not supposed to sparkle. No, they don't. Um, but you know, werewolves, for that matter, that don't mm-hmm. want to change, and the idea of conscience that harkens right back to the original Wolfman. But zombies, it's just a ravenous animal instinct, which is probably the most frightening thing for a civilized uh, person to imagine. With there's no moral core. There's no huge motivation. You're not going to talk a zombie out of eating yet. It's just not going to happen. So they're one no. of the most frightening monsters and they've been relegated to the back seat until probably the last four or five years through things like the walking dead. And, uh, uh, there was a, another one, um, that I saw recently. Um, Oh, uh, BBC. We just watched an amazing, uh, the, the zombie, uh, uh, cult show on BBC called In the Flesh, which is a, a neat take on the idea of um, the redeemable zombie, which is interesting, uh, where they treat the, the zombie as if uh, he can come back, um, <clears throat> at least in part, come back to the living, which is an interesting concept. And they use it as a metaphor for prejudice, which is fantastic. But it's just, uh, as Yvonne said, you kind of forget that there were all of these fantastic zombie stories out there uh, with, with their roots going back to uh, Haiti and, and New Orleans and voodoo. And um, they've all been forgotten about for so much time. So it's great to see that there's an aficionado out there. Uh, and it sounds like you really uh, are, are somewhat of an expert on this particular film genre. So that's fantastic, Robert. Um, I'm hardly an expert, but yeah, I do know my stuff. And I wanted to, Mention a couple of other kind of more obscure films, if you don't mind. This sure. has gone by um, multiple titles. Uh, it's known as The Living Dead at Manchester Morgue, otherwise known as Let Sleeping Corpses Lie. Um, it's <laughs> rather interesting. Uh, it focuses on a pest control type of satellite that is unintentionally reanimating the dead, and of course it's another foreign film set in England. Um, Rather gory once it gets going, but it's still good. And uh, of course I mentioned children shouldn't play with dead things. I like that title. 
which is free on Prime if you want to take a look at it. Um, and there was actually, believe it or not, a modern zombie film which I really enjoyed, and it's going to surprise you when I tell you who's in the main role. It's called Maggie, and it features Arnold Schwarzenegger in a serious role. He's not doing fun niners or anything like that. <laughs> I he actually, is in I actually, uh, yeah, uh, Maggie. It, it's uh, 2016, uh, released on uh, digital, and it's been uh, it's actually been very well received. And Arnold gets quite a few props for his acting, which is yeah, uh, unusual. Actually, it's a serious role. Uh, in in the case of Maggie. Uh, zombie, um, zombieism, I suppose, uh, is treated like a disease, and it's a rumination on death, really. Wow. It's, yeah, and it's and it's, how how people with disease or people dying are perceived by people around them, uh, and Arnold does do an excellent job of delivering a very serious and dramatic performance as uh, uh, someone who is faced with dealing with the death of, uh, I believe it's his daughter, is it not? Yeah, his daughter. His yeah, yeah. And dealing with her mortality and the fact that she's going to become a zombie. And he's ha- he has to deal with that. So I think in, a, in many ways it speaks to that part of us that has to deal with loved ones who are going through uh, that transition, uh, whether it be yeah. a disease or an injury. Um, but the people around them, how they perceive them and how they help them and, and either support. Again, we talked about this in the, in the top of the show, uh, whether your, your support network is so important. If they're supportive, then you really feel that. And if they're not, if they, um, if they get lost in the tragedy of it all, you feel that too. And Arnold delivers a fantastic performance um, when, when that zombie monster is used as a metaphor for our own mortality, which is, and, Probably uh, great use of, of of a great movie monster. Yes, and uh, I'm just going to go ahead and say a uh, mild spoiler alert. Uh, Arnold is given the option, you know, multiple times in the film, we can put your daughter in quarantine, we can kill her ourselves, or we can give you the medicine that they would give her in quarantine, but she'll be in agony. And he basically tells them, leave and don't come back. Wow. Wow. Yeah, wow. It, it is. It is. It, it is. So much So much of the time, the things that scare us on Halloween, and this is a great time to, to talk about these things, is, is with Halloween, you know, coming up just next week, the things that scare us uh really have become metaphors for the way we face life and transitions in life and yep. so many of the things that happen to us. And, you know, whether it is uh, our our own vice, uh, which we are often faced with in the idea that the, the hands of a vampire, our lust and our and our greed and our, our insatiable hunger for things or zombies and our dealing with our own mortality uh, and how we deal with death and illness and the the tragedies that befall us um you know one of the scariest things uh is a halloween where we actually looked at those monsters and saw what they were which is a mirror held up to our faces showing us all of the ways that we face or don't face what life deals us and and that's probably scarier than anything that we can uh any jump scare uh in, in any movie uh, is the idea of actually facing those things down and realizing that, um, again, you know, just as Robert has done so many times, uh, owning where you are in life and, and whether you're in transition or you're facing illness or facing hard times or writer's block or anything else, any hurdle that's thrown at you is a monster. And if you face down that monster, then like so many movie heroes, you get to stand at the end and, and be doing okay. So. Um, it, it's it's a great time. Halloween's a great time for us to have a great time and have a lot of fun. I've got a six year old around here that can't wait to dress up, but it's also <laughs> a great time to uh, it's also a great time to take a look at us and 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 our and our general human condition and say, hey, you know these monsters 
we're not created out of thin air. We're creative minded people and we, we give our demons faces. And I like uh, that analogy. I do. I like that a lot. I suppose well, even – go ahead. You go first. Right, You're everyone, the host. Every, 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 every once in a while I get lucky with one of those. <laughs> <laughs> what were you going to say, Robert? Yeah. I was going to say that I enjoy this movie as well, even though it's not uh, strictly a zombie genre picture, Wes Craven's The Serpent and the Rainbow. Oh, amazing, amazing movie. Uh, truly, I saw that in my late uh, my late teens. Oh God, am I that old? Yeah, I guess I am. Uh, I saw that I saw that in my late teens, and it was just a phenomenal look at perception, uh, and it, it really is. So Craven. wow, Craven is another sadly missed horror meister for sure. Yeah, he is. He, he, one of the greats, absolutely one of the greats. Gentlemen, y'all are not going to believe this, but the top of the hour is rolling around. Wow. You just get talking about fun stuff and you don't even notice that. <laughs> well, uh, how about I make one last blatant horror movie plug and we wrap this up? Well, go right ahead because I want you to also tell folks where you can be found. So plug away, my friend. Sure. I'm not going to go the normal route. I'm not going to say Halloween. I'm not going to say Hellraiser. I'm not going to say Nightmare on Elm Street or Friday the 13th. I know, blasphemy, but I'm good at that. Um, I'm going to go with the the uh, Phantasm franchise of films. Wow. I... I don't think I've heard a Phantasm reference in a long time, but talk about scare the hell out of you. Uh, wow. The original re- Phantasm is like a lucid nightmare. It, it is. It is. It's just amazing. You know, that's – and that's something that if you guys are out there looking for something to do out there on, in the World Wide Web and you're looking for something to, to pop in your, on digital or, or your DVD player – or if any of you still have a VHS machine, uh, pop in Phantasm, 1979 Phantasm. Uh, it's just a, a mind-bending scare. You're, it'll it'll frighten the hell out of you. I haven't even thought of Phantasm in 20 years. Thank goodness. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now he's going to oh, go out and rent it. <laughs> yeah, actually, now I have, here, here's a piece of info it. for everyone. All of the films have been digitally remastered. They are either available on Amazon Video to rent or Shutter.com. You can stream most of them for free. And Phantasm 5 was released last year after the unfortunate passing of Angus Scrim, but they were able to complete the movie before he passed. Wow. Wow. That- so, there you go. There you go. Yvonne, what do you have planned for Halloween? Um, well, my costume's a permanent one, so I'm probably going to be <laughs> sitting around watching horror movies. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, so, my dear friend Robert, tell the folks where you can be found, and I want you to come back on the show after the first of the year because I want to know where you are with your, your getting your work printed. Oh, of course, certainly, and... Uh, Thank you for the quick reminder. It will be titled Obsidian Orations, and it will come out via the book arm of Hydra's publishing house, Infernal Ink Books. And as we're closer to publication, I will let you know. As far as right now, I can be found on Facebook at facebook.com slash Robert J. Luthold. Don't worry, I know it's a weird last name. I'm going to spell it. That is L E U T H O L D. Just send me a message, let me know that you found me on Off the Chain. And for some reason, Yvonne unleashed me tonight. I don't know why. <laughs> I've had all my shots. But, you know, let me know that you found me on Off the Chain, and I'll shoot you a message and I'll add you. 
and it, he's wonderful. It has been a pleasure. It has been an absolute pleasure spending an hour with you two. Well, we Thank have you. been so it, honored. Been a, it Go has ahead, been Garrett. a fantastic time. It has been a fantastic time. Garrett, tell the folks where you can be found, found my friend. Uh, oh, right. Well, I'm G.W. Pometer. I am the host. Uh, and producer of the Hanging With Web Show. I'm an author myself. You can find me at uh, www.hangingwithshow.com, on Twitter at Hanging With Show, on Facebook at Hanging With Web Show, and also at, at GW Pometer. Uh, I'm excited right now. I, uh, my uh, latest novel, Yesterday's Tomorrow, is actually free in the iTunes store for the next two weeks. So, uh, check out the Facebook pages or the website. You get a link over there, and you get yourself a free novel. And uh, we're loving that. We are uh, the show itself. Uh, we're going to be live at the O'Galley Art Fest the weekend uh, before Thanksgiving. And until then, just we're going to be putting our episodes out every day. We have been to some fantastic creative venues in the past month or so. We've been to MegaCon Tampa Bay. Uh, we've had a crew out in upstate New York doing an author and film festival. We just came from the Melbourne Independent Film Festival. All of those episodes are up at hangingwithshow.com, and they come out on our Facebook page and our Twitter accounts every morning between 9 and 10 o'clock. So we hope you all will check that out. Uh, and we also like to announce when Yvonne has a new guest coming up, and we have some fantastic Hanging With Web Show alumni uh, hitting the airways with Yvonne over the next month, too. So uh, we'll be listening in there, and uh, we hope everybody else will, too. So thank you so much, Yvonne, for having me on, and let me share your time with Robert. Well, you're quite welcome, and y'all don't hang up when the show goes dark. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Absolutely. what Garrett forgot to tell you is he's coming back on the show as a guest in the month of November. And and I have yes, no idea where the, I, I don't know where the show will go because that's why we call it Off the Chain. Um, <laughs> this is our last show for the month. We will start off again on November the 2nd with author Sherry Rensler. She's been on before. She's just released a new book, so that is next Thursday. I don't think, no, I don't have a show on Wednesday, I don't believe. I'll have to look and see. It's been that kind of month for me. Well, everybody, Y'all know can, that- everybody can find uh, Sherry's, Sherry's latest book, Time and Blood. Everybody can uh, hop over and they can find uh, a link to that over on the hangingwithwebshow.com as well. Absolutely. Thank you, Garrett. Yeah. And it's it's excellent. Now, y'all know, everybody that's listened to the show or been on this show knows that I have a couple of things that I say at the end of the show simply because I believe in inspiration. And I have been so inspired tonight. Robert inspires me daily. And so does Garrett. I, I am surrounded by inspirational people. And one of the things that I say is don't just feel special, be special, because if you just feel special, you'll never be special. And if you want to achieve greatness, please stop asking permission because nobody's going to give it to you because they want you down in that pit with them because they don't feel like they're achieving greatness. One day you'll be a memory for some people, so do your best to be a good one. And then my favorite all-time saying, and and y'all have heard me say it every night on this show, your smile is your logo. Your personality is indeed your business card. And the way that you leave others feeling after having had an experience with you, ladies and gentlemen, that is indeed your trademark. So don't be that person who's in the casket and people look over in the casket and someone says, well, what do you think of so-and-so? And and the second person says, oh, they had nice hair. Don't be that person. You really don't want to be that person. You want to be the person that when someone mentions your name, the person they're talking to, their face lights up. They have a smile on their face because you've touched them in some way. So carry those with you and join us again on either Wednesday night or Thursday night. And we will start a brand new week for the month of November, which will be a short month because we have Thanksgiving and I will be out of town one weekend. But we're going to make up for it in quality as opposed to quantity in the month of November and December. And I want to thank Robert for coming on and reading his poem. It was a beautiful, beautiful poem. Gave me chill bumps. I loved it. I love Robert. 
I want to thank Garrett and the girls. You're so welcome. And the Garrett and the girls for co-hosting the show with me. I learned a lot, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know about y'all, but the dialogue between Garrett and Robert about the horror film industry just blew me away. So thank you guys very much. So until next week, this is Yvonne Mason and my co-host Garrett Pominster and my guest, Robert Luthold, and we are indeed off the chain, and Lord willing and the creeks don't rise, we will see and talk to all of y'all next week. So with that being, that being said, the girls are clapping. That being said, the three of us say a hearty good night and happy Halloween. Happy Halloween, everybody. Happy Halloween. (laughs) So we are now off the air, guys, but we're going into archives. And y'all know that when this show goes up tonight, I will put it up on my page, and I'm going to tag both of you. And, and Garrett, I'll tag the girls, too. And y'all take the show and promote it any way you want to. Tomorrow I'll put the podcast I'll put the podcast up, and I'm going to also tag y'all in the – on my page too. Take all five of those podcasts and play with them any way you want to. <laughs> Absolutely. We Thank you, you so Yvonne. much, Yvonne. Love you too. I thank both of y'all. I thank all four of y'all so much for being on the show tonight. I, I appreciate it. And it was actually a, a beautiful, beautiful, unexpected off the chain show. One of the best we've had. Well, it was a lot, a lot of fun. We kept Sage busy over here. Robert's expertise in uh, uh, zombie films was fantastic. I had to have her look up a few because I had I hadn't heard of them, and I'm a huge movie geek. So, thank you, Robert. Sweet. Now I have new things to watch. <laughs> of course. <laughs> so, guys, I am going to say good night so I can get this thing up and get y'all tagged in it. And Garrett, I will be talking to you in the next day or two to set up our show in November. Robert, I want you to come back on in April or May if you're up to it because I'm booked sure. until then. And mm-hmm. thank you so much for reading that poem. I loved it. You're welcome. And I noticed I was a lot more calm and sure of my words this time. Yes, you were, and you didn't have half as much trouble breathing this time either as you no. did before. I, so every time it, I definitely had better breathing control. Every you, you time did an it amazing gets a job, easier. Robert, really did. He, he really did. Every time it gets a little bit easier. So uh, that's going to be one of our staples. When you come on the show, you got to read one of your pieces of work. I will. Okay. And with that, guys, I love you both. I love the girls. And I'm going to say. I love you too, Yvonne. Love you too. Love you too. (laughs) All right, Yvonne, you have a wonderful night. Guys, have a great Halloween next week. (laughs) All right. See y'all later. Good night. All righty. Good night, everybody. Hi, this is Maury Moreland Morrison, here to tell you GEICO has more than just great savings. Much more. Yes, while GEICO could help you rack up more moolah faster than you can say metamorphosis, they've also been the fastest growing auto insurer for more than 10 years. That's more like it. Furthermore, GEICO has fast and friendly claim service. That might seem like an oxymoron, but it's not. All the more reason to say no other auto insurer has more more than GEICO. GEICO. Expect great savings and a whole lot more.